Today's review is likely to be long awaited by some and possibly not on the top of the want to see reviewed list for some others. And being the kind of bloke who prefers to sit in front of a nice warm fire with a glass of something on a dark evening rather than being outside in the cold pursuing pests, this wouldn't normally be on my wish list. How wrong I was. This is a really amazing piece of kit and well worth a look by any shooter. Not just air gunners either. It is the Pod NV008P. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today is the turn of the Pod 008P. This is available in two different types, this one and the LRF or Laser Rangefinder version, which I'll look at the use and need for a little later. First of all though, stats and overview. This is basically a direct replacement for the scope on the top of your gun, not an attachment to the back of your existing scope as per the NV007. Weighing in at 420 grams without battery or 585 grams with battery, supplied mounts and additional SDTF card that you'll need and you're going to need to buy it separately if you want to record your shooting. The length of this is pretty irrelevant to my mind because this is far shorter than most scopes and its positioning is different to where most scopes would find themselves mounted anyway, as we'll see later. This does come in a rather nice case to keep it safe and ironically a bag as well both of which seem to find themselves somewhat redundant as soon as you attach this, the supplied mount. Because once this is in place, to be able to add to your rifle, it will no longer fit in either the case or the bag. I suppose it's irrelevant really, because I see this permanently attached to a gun. And if you want to use a gun for non-nighttime use or filming, then I would guess a lot of people would have another rifle set up for daytime or target type use. Now that may sound extravagant, but often if you're spending out this kind of money on digital vision, then a second setup is quite often within your budget. This isn't always the case, hence the quick release bracket for ease of swapping over. And this has a trick up its sleeve in the guise of a two shot zero system that does actually work. Let's take a look and a walk around first, shall we? And whilst it isn't very far to go, there is a surprising amount to actually take in and look at. Let's start with a bit of slider B-roll first to whet your appetite, shall we? Whilst shooting and filming, I had this one set on an R5M Matador for no other reason than it was to hand and a fantastic gun anyway. It is all black, compact, with a rubber eyepiece on the rear to allow you to get close up and personal with it and set your eye in the right place and cut out any other light bleeding in or out. Now, I don't normally use an eyepiece on any scopes, but this does add a level of comfort. In front of this is the eyepiece focusing adjuster, which basically helps you to focus your eye on the screen that is projecting the image inside, which is pretty good quality, it must be said, with its resolution of about 1024 by 768. On the top is the IR light and battery holder, which takes a one of 18650 battery, which is rechargeable and they claim will last upwards of eight hours. They are readily available and not particularly expensive, so carrying a spare is never a bad idea and they are rechargeable. It's also worth mentioning that this can be left in a sleep mode, so I would fully expect the battery to have some drain in this mode, and likely as not, you're gonna leave this in sleep mode after using it, quite possibly. Then the next time you come to use it, it's gonna be as flat as a pancake. 
so that spare battery is starting to sound even more like a decent idea. The IR light is focusable with the slider on the top. Directly below this is the main front lens and optical focus ring, pretty much as you would find on a camera, only smaller. The optics on this do seem to be pretty good and the focus ring is nice and smooth and not at all notchy. On the right hand side is a small rail. This would be taken up by the laser rangefinder on the LRF version, but is available for whatever takes your fancy on this version. Directly behind this is a screw off cover that must have come out of a C2302 battery cover parts bin and has been adapted to be the weather seal for the micro SD card, micro HDMI cable and micro USB charging point. All very neat and easy to access. On the left side is the main on off button with a surrounding blue ring. At first glance I thought this was going to light up like some kind of super trooper and be about as helpful on a night shoot as an umpar band. Fortunately it doesn't light up but the colour does make it a little easier to see in the dark conditions. There are only five buttons overall on this anyway, and the other four are all in a line on the top. Now this is always a source of frustration to an old git like me, because this can often cause all kinds of confusions around quick press, long press, uh, press while pressing another, and only press when it's a full moon in June. You get the picture. So let's take a look at what they're all about. Starting left to right. First up is the zoom button, which is also the play button and the plus button combined. See what I mean? Anyway, I can hear my IT guy muttering something like dinosaur and simpleton in my head. So I will try to explain in simple terms that I can understand. The zoom part simply doubles up the image and takes it from six and a half times to 13 times zoom. Now the way it does that is digitally, which means the image quality is going to suffer. Now whilst this is noticeable through the viewfinder, the high HD resolution it films in should still be reasonably good at around 720 image. The other parts to this button are basically the playback button and the plus to move you up and down through the menus. Not too confusing so far, hopefully. Next is the OK recording and LRF button. Again, this isn't the LRF version, so it's really only a record button and an OK button in the menus. I can cope with that so far. And it has the raised bars on it so you can feel it without the need to take your eye away from the viewfinder. Third is the IR, mode switch and minus button. This changes it from colour to black and white with one long press and can then be used to change the brightness. Oh, and it moves you in the menus again, up and down. Finally, we have button number four, which is the easiest. It simply switches on the red dot that is built onto this little Pandora's box of tricks and also doubles up as the menu button. Simple then, even for a dinosaur like me. Mounting it on the rifle then. This is done via the supplied bracket and screws. Screw the plate to the base of the pod using the three supplied screws and then pop it onto your preferred rifle which can either be dovetail, picatinny or weaver mount. This clever little fitting will mate up to almost anything with ease. Naturally this stage is going to take a little bit more trial and error to get it exactly right for your preferred position. All set, now you're going to need to zero this, which can be done with only two shots apparently. First thing to do is to get into the menu by pressing and holding button four. 
Taking your first shot, aiming at bull. Then you need to decide what letter you're going to assign to this rifle. You have a choice of five, A, B, C, D or E. This means you can then use this pre-zeroed on several rifles, which is a nice idea. Then move the crosshairs back onto the bull. Press the OK button to get you onto the x-axis and this will then freeze frame the image and using the plus and minus buttons, remember those from earlier on, move the reticle to line up with the actual place the pellet hit. Use the y-axis the same until you're over the pellet hole. Then save all the settings and this should be zeroed on your next shot. That is a really nice idea and not as fiddly or complicated as you think, especially when you've done it a couple of times. Now whilst this is intended for you to use this for five different rifles, I don't see any reason why you couldn't have five different zero distances all programmed in for one rifle. From here you can look at the full menu list, which includes more options than flavours of ice cream in an Italian ice cream parlour. Most are self-explanatory, such as date and time etc. But a couple worth noting are the PIP, or Picture in Picture, which gives exactly that in the top of your viewfinder and doubles up the image size. Which means on double mode this image is actually four times bigger and you can also set it up to have its own crosshair which gives you a pretty effective zoom range. Naturally this is a digital image so the quality does drop again but it is a nice feature and a nice to have. Wi-Fi is also an option to use on this and your smartphone or the like, but they don't give you a link to an app and leave you to sort that one out yourself, which going through the forums, people seem to have their favourites and lots simply create more problems than they solve. I spent quite some time trying this, but frustration and timescales meant I didn't feel I could make a recommendation to you guys. Well, certainly not at this stage, but I welcome any comments from the guys out there who have got one and find one that works. The list of options continues and includes loop recording, audio, brightness, default or startup settings, etc. All will allow you to personalise this really useful bit of kit more than a teenager in Halfords in his first car. It's ironic, really. We've gone through all this lot and haven't even seen the night vision part of this yet. Here we are at night, then, in black and white night mode. And this is easily clear enough for night use. And don't forget, there are different intensity settings to get the brightness you want. Now, it is completely black outside, and I can still quite clearly see the target and getting that nice shot at even 40 metres is a pretty simple task. It really is a nice piece of kit, this. So, what do I think overall? I think this is clearly a well thought out and very useful addition to any shooter's armoury. It is light, compact, packed with features that you will actually use rather than a load of options that are about as useful as the proverbial chocolate fire guard. This will be a go-to item for people who shoot at night or in dark areas. You can mix it up with different rifles or distances in the settings. It is ideal if you like to film your shooting in whatever format that takes. It is quality and well made. It probably isn't cheap at just under £650 UK, but there's a lot packed into this. The LRF version will give you that extra benefit of the range finding element, but will cost a little more. And I hope to get hold of one of those very soon to do a comparison with. Will it replace the normal optical scope? I don't think so. Not for daytime use or target work, but it is an addition to regular scopes. And it's for those who have a real need and use for it. 
I really like it and can see a whole host of uses for it and it will make a nice addition to any rifle. That's it. As always, hopefully you found this useful. If so, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe and of course hit the alarm bell to be notified when a new review comes out. Take a look at all this lot. And thank you to Vector Air for the loan of this rather special piece of kit. And I hope to see you next Friday. But for now, stay safe and shoot safe. And thank you so much for watching.